Okay, this is 6.6b in elementary algebra. And if you ever wonder why the screen sometimes switches from dark to uh, white, it's because of the time of the day and where I'm videoing. Like right now, I'm videoing out on my deck outside. The sun is shining and the black screen. You just can't read it. So then I go and do it on white screen. So anyway, if you really care, that's, that's the reason. All right, so we're on example three. 16a squared minus 25 equals zero. Okay, two terms there. That is the difference of two squares. So if you remember from some of the other sections and from your note, notes, you should already have this. What two numbers multiplied together give me that? What two numbers multiplied together give me that? Plus, minus, and we're done. But we have an equal zero. So we have to say 4a plus 5 equals zero, or 4a minus 5 equals zero. So we solve for a. Subtract 5, subtract 5. 4a equals negative 5. Divide by 4, divide by 4, cancel, and there's your, one of your answers. Negative 5 fourths. For this one over here, you add 5, add 5. 4a equals 5, divide by 4, divide by 4, cancel. A equals 5 fourths. There's your two answers, and that's all there is to it. So see why it was important to learn that this is the difference of two squares, because how in the world would you have figured this part out down here if you hadn't been taught this is the difference of two squares? Two numbers, one multiplied together give me this, one multiplied by itself to give me that. If that's true and there's a minus sign between them, I can just write it like that. And will make your life so much easier because you'll either remember that pattern or you'll be lost because there's absolutely no way to figure it out algebraically except to know that it's the difference of two squares. So. Um, example four. Okay. First thing that we do is we always set it equal to zero before we do anything else. So I move the minus, the 8x over by subtracting it from both sides. Then I'm going to look and see if I can factor anything out. Yes, I can factor a 4x out. Okay. Wasn't so bad. Set that equal to zero, set that equal to zero. I'm setting the two parts that I'm multiplying together equal to zero. So 4x equals zero and x minus 2 equals zero. All right, so I divide by 4, divide by 4, cancel. x equals zero over 4, which is equal to zero. x minus 2 is zero. Add 2 to both sides to get the x by itself. And I get two answers there. X is 0, and X is 2. All right, so let's take that information and move on to example 5. All right, <clears throat> let's distribute. Distribute. Subtract 44 from both sides, and we get 2x squared plus 3x minus 44 equals 0. Okay, so we had to set it equal to 0. Very, very important. All right, so now we have to factor that. So we have a number there, so we take 2 times negative 44 and uh, get negative 88. So I'm looking for two numbers, multiplied together, give me negative 88, and added, give me a 3. Okay, but one of the things that's nice here is this is a prime number. So if I have this as a prime number, there aren't any factors to this except 2 and 1. So what that tells me is one of these is going to be 2x, and one of these is going to be x. Okay, but let's uh, not worry about that at this point, but you, at least you know what you're going to get there. So two numbers multiplied together to give you negative 88 added, 
give you a positive 3. Okay, so as I go through all the factors here, I remember that 11 times 8 is 88. I need a negative. So I'm going to put a positive 11 and a negative 8 because 11 times negative 8 is negative 88. 11 minus 8 is positive 3. So you play around with the negatives. Once you find, oh, 11 and an 8, there's a 3 between them, and that's what I want. And when I multiply them, I get 88. And then you play around with, do I put a plus sign or a negative sign, you know, in front of which? So 2x squared. Oh, I don't want to use yellow. That's just kind of nasty. Um, 2x squared plus 11... No, let's do 8. Keep the negative on the 8x and put the positive there so it's in the middle there so we don't have to deal with that stupid negative. Okay. So that is the same as the positive 3, 8. We just wrote it different. Group, group. What can I pull out of there? A 2x, and I'm left with an x minus 4. In here I can pull out an 11, and I'm left with x minus 4, which is exactly what I should. These two should be the same. Put the 2x plus 11 in one parenthesis, an x minus 4 in another, and I factored this whole thing, but I need to make it equal to 0 because I need to find the answer. Alright, so let's get a bunch of this stuff out of here. So I've got more room to write. Set that equal to zero, and this one equal to zero, minus 11, minus 11, 2x equals negative 11, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals negative 11 over 2, because those go away. All right, over here, same thing, plus 4, plus 4, x equals positive 4. Okay, so there's your answer for um, problem number five. Okay, so let's get up to example number six. It's interesting, I had um, dinner with a good friend of mine. I taught his son seventh grade all the way through calculus one when he was, uh, when I was teaching high school. And uh, he works for Boeing right now down in Seattle. And I was with him yesterday and talked to this friend of mine whose son works for Boeing and just asked how he was doing. And he said that uh, a month ago, uh, Boeing came to him and asked him to design the interior for the new um, Air Force One for the President of the United States. And it's like, oh, my word, I feel like a, I feel like I know a celebrity, somebody that was asked to, as an engineer, to design the interior of the president's airplane. And it's like, wow, I taught him math. Wow, that's pretty awesome. But he was so smart, he wouldn't have gotten the math in spite of <laughs> me teaching him. But I just thought that was pretty cool. Okay, so five squared. Not that I can promise that you're going to be asked to uh, design the interior of Air Force One, but... All right, so I did that. Didn't change anything else except 5 times 5, but I'm going to have to do the FOIL method here. As it says, it's squared. So see how you re have to le learn all this math and remember every stinking bit of it. It doesn't go away. So FOIL. You're going to FOIL that. First times first. Outside. Inside. Last, x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we're going to take that and we're going to replace that. So 25 equals x squared plus, and then we're going to put what we just figured out here, x squared plus 2x plus 1. So let's combine some things. And let's make this 0, so we're going to take it away here, and take it away here. 
So we end up with 0 equals 2x squared plus 2x minus 24. And I'm going to take the 0, I'm going to move it to the other side, just so I have the 0 on the right. I just like it better that way. All right. Hmm. As I look at this, I can say I have a 2 common to each one of these terms, so I'm going to pull out a 2. Okay, so now what I'm doing is focusing on this. See if I can break it down into two binomials. Two, I can, an x there and an x there. Two numbers multiplied together give me negative 12. And added give me 1. Well, immediately 4 and 3 come to mind because the difference between 4 and 3 is 1 and 4 times 3 is 12. It's just what's the sign that goes in there. I need a positive 1. So that means the 4 has to be positive and the 3 has to be negative so that 4 minus 3 is 1. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So that's what I want there. So then I write, uh, let's do some blue, x plus 4 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. So minus 4 minus 4, x equals negative 4 because those go away plus 3, plus 3, x, those go away, equals 3. So that's one of my answers, and that's one of my answers. So see what's going on. They just keep giving you more and more um, different types of problems to do that you need to know all the math that you've done basically since kindergarten in order to do these. So let's do example 7, and we'll call it good. Okay, well let's move all of this over. So remember, to move all of that over to the other side, really all you have to do is change the signs and move it over, just like that, where you want it to go. Then I look and say, well wait a minute, what is common to both of these? I have a 2 that goes into each one of those, so I'm going to pull a 2 out. I also have, well, let's just do 12x squared plus 5x squared, whoops, that's a 3, sorry, minus 3x equals 0. I also have an x I can pull out of here. Okay, so I'm going to pull that x out, and I'm left with 12x squared plus 5x minus 3 equals 0. Now we have to factor that. So the 2x will stay, but I multiply 12 times negative 3 and get negative 36. Two numbers multiplied together give me negative 36 and added give me a positive 5. And that would be 9 times 4 equals 36 and the difference between those is 5. So I've got 2x, 12x squared, plus 9x minus 4x minus 3 equals 0. But remember, I don't like the negative as that middle one, so I'm going to switch those around, and I'm going to make that minus 4x plus 9x. Now, when I add these together, I still get my positive 5, but I like having that plus sign there in the middle. All right, so let's keep going before I run out of time. Um, so I group these and group those. So I can factor out, let's just kind of keep that one off by itself, so we'll do it in red as we factor this stuff out. I'm going to factor out a 4x, and I'm left with a 3x minus 1. And I'm going to factor out a 3, and I'm left with x minus, or 3x minus 1 equals 0. Those are the same, which is good gives me 2x, and then I've got a 4x plus 3, and a 3x minus 1. Okay, so remember what I said earlier. If you look clear back here and I take my highest exponent, that's how many answers you're going to have. So what I have is I have three answers. I've got one here, one here, and one here. So let's see if I can race against the clock. 2x equals 0. 4x plus 3 equals 0, 3x minus 1 equals 0. And so x equals 0 here. 
subtract 3, subtract 3, you do that work, 